The Lord is risen. Welcome. This is Father Joe Gisetti. Thank you for joining me as we continue to explore this vast cafeteria that we call the world of prayer. And I would like to take a bit of a diversion with this video and share with you a reading from the Old Testament, perhaps one of the most beautiful stories in the Old Testament. This is from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, and this is uh, selections of that chapter. I'm jumping over a couple of things here. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Arameans had captured from the land of Israel in a raid a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand there to call on the name of the Lord as God and would move his hand over the place and thus cure the leprous spot. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the Farpar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him, My father, if the prophet told you to do something extraordinary, would you not do it? All the more, since he told you, wash and be clean. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh again became like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Sister Wendy Beckett, who I've talked about before, has commented on this, and there's a couple of lessons to be drawn from this. Uh, number one, sometimes uh, we can miss the boat, not because something is too hard, but because it is too easy, okay? Yes, we might be called someday to die for our faith. And if that happens, we pray that God will give us the strength to do it. Chances are that's not going to happen, at least not here. Okay, But every day we are going to be asked to, in one way or another, be generous, perhaps to be patient with someone, perhaps to be kind to someone, perhaps to hold our temper when we're in traffic or things like that. Starts to sound a lot like that little way of Saint Therese. Well, this is what happened with Naaman. Okay? Uh, the problem wasn't that he was asked to do something too difficult. He was asked to do something that was very simple. And he got very angry. And he said, the waters that back home are better than these waters. I'm not doing this. He was fortunate to have these faithful servants who convinced him to go ahead and do it, and he was cured. And so sometimes it's the same for us. We can miss the boat because sometimes what we're being asked to do is very simple. All right, that's number one. Number two, this becomes for us a bit of an image of prayer, to simply go down into the water. He went down into the water and bathed and did that seven times and he was cured. Okay. He didn't affect the cure, but he cooperated. He went down into the water. And one way of looking at prayer is as simply seeing it as going down into the water. Go down into the water and let God take it from there. 
Now, there's something else here. It's not mentioned directly in the story, but we can assume it. Presumably, what did he do before he went down into the water? Well, presumably, he took off his clothes, okay? Which means he made himself vulnerable. He made himself vulnerable to God's healing. And there's an image in that for us, metaphorically, of course. Metaphorically, we do the same thing when we pray, or that's what we're called to do. We seek to make ourselves vulnerable to God's love. We seek to open ourselves up to God's healing and to God's love. And so there are two very important points to draw from this. Uh, number one, okay, prayer is something that is simple. We've talked about some of those definitions and all, opening our hearts and minds to God, the breath of faith, and so forth. Prayer is something simple. And something else I would add, prayer is something practical. We get more things done when we pray. Perhaps you've had the experience, some days if you take the time to exercise, uh, you're able to get more done, you have more energy that day, you just feel better. Well, the same thing is with prayer. Uh, one, uh, another name for prayer, one name for prayer is what we call spiritual exercises. So that brings that analogy uh, about uh, in a more direct fashion. Uh, I belong to the Y. I haven't been there for a while because of the pandemic, but I enjoy going there. Sometimes I call it the St. Therese Annex because I run into so many people from the parish there. And I enjoy running into people from the parish there and saying hello to them. But quite often I'll say to them, you know, exercise is like prayer. We get more done when we do it. And so just as the same is true with our physical exercises, so the same is true with our spiritual exercises. Prayer is something that is simple. Prayer is something that is practical. And as we continue to journey together on this journey of faith through this desert of a pandemic, it's important that we continue to ground ourselves in God's love and that we continue to lift each other up in prayer and to lift up our suffering world.